I'm back. Yep. Uh, Ace Trump reporting here from Glasgow, Scotland. We're on tour with Europe and Black Star Riders. Both bands celebrating the release of new records. Black Star Riders has The Killer Instinct and Europe has The War of Kings. We've done two shows in Ireland already. Uh, Belfast and Dublin both went down a storm. We have a day off today in Glasgow, Scotland. And tomorrow and the following day, we're playing at the ABC Club here in Glasgow before we move down south. And uh, this, of course, is Ricky's sort of home away from home. When he was a teenager, his whole family left Belfast and moved into this area. So he's familiar with this town. I first want to say, I know I haven't posted for quite a while. I wasn't sure anybody was actually watching this, but... In the last few months, I've encountered a lot of fans and a lot of you out there, and you've said some very complimentary things, and a lot of people have been asking me for new new updates and such things. So I thought, okay, well, I'm on this tour. I'll see what I can do. The first thing I wanted to show you is uh, I'm here in Glasgow, so I wanted to go down to a place that I first encountered, mm, I think it was about 2003. We were on tour with the band Asia. And we played a little place here in Glasgow called The Garage. And right across the street, just around the corner in, in a side street, is this famous cafe called King's Cafe. It's been there for like 120 years or something. And uh, the thing that amazed me the first time I went there is everything on their menu is available deep fried. And I'm not just talking the stuff that you would normally think of like french fries or fish and chips or whatever. I'm talking pizza, burgers, bread haggis had to try that one and of course the standard mars bars just about anything you can think of they'll deep fry it up for you today i went and tried the battered haggis and i have to say it was fantastic you gotta check it out i'm about a part of the way through it but uh there we go looks lovely doesn't it anyway exceptional if you're ever in glasgow King's Cafe, you must go. Fantastic food. Anyway, so I thought today's journal entry could be uh, in celebration of a friend of mine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I was here with Asia a number of years ago, over 12 years ago now, and uh, Adam and I were managing the band at the time. And uh, the lineup consisted of Jeff Downs on keyboards, John Payne on vocals and bass, uh, Guthrie Govin on lead guitar, and Chris Slade on drums. Now, for those of you who haven't heard, Chris recently landed, or re-landed is probably the more appropriate way of putting it, his role in ACDC. So if you ever see this, Chris, congratulations. I, I'm really happy for you, and I hope it, it goes really, really well for you. You're, you're the right guy for the job. Anyway, I had a lot of adventures across the world with Chris. He's one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet. And one night we were in uh, we were in Spain, that's where it was, and we had a double decker bus as you do over here when you're touring. And we were in this little village just outside of Granada in Spain. Now this this little village it was quite small. In fact, the streets were so small that when our bus came and parked in front of the venue, you literally couldn't get anything else down that street. Maybe if you walked sideways and kind of squeezed your way along the side, you would get through. So obviously the bus wasn't going to stay there. It had to go park elsewhere after we had unloaded. Now, it was being held in this community center, and the promoter had hired a whole group of gypsies to do the lighting and sound for this. And, and, I, and I mean that sincerely. It, over here in Europe, they have that's part of the population that are gypsies. And so... Now, this was one of the most slipshod operations I had ever witnessed in my life. They, their lighting board was a laptop, okay? Seriously. Anyway, we, did, we got on with the show as we did. And when we finished the main part of the set and we were preparing for the encore, the laptop crashed. <laughs> and suddenly there was two lights on on the rig and that is it. And I was on, uh, our crew consisted of a, uh, one of the funniest guys I ever met. His name, his name is Paul Myers, but everybody calls him Pliers. And Cody Allenson, who has been working with 
our team on everything for about the last 25 years. Right now, he works for Black Star Riders. He takes care of Scott, Damon, and uh, not he doesn't do Scott. Excuse me, he does Damon, Robbie, and Ricky's guitars. <clears throat> so he's a busy man on stage, and he's very good at what he does. Also can have some really funny comments. But anyway, so Cody and I were standing on one side of the stage, and Paul was on the other because he was doing mo mo monitors as well. And so to try and get through the, the final part of the set, we used flashlights to shine it on the band's faces just so they could do the final song and we could get the hell out of there. So we did it, and uh, we started packing up, and the promoter was so angry with these people he'd hired, he wasn't going to pay them. Well, they weren't going to have that happen. So we had this 30-foot by 40-foot backdrop of the entire Aura album cover beautiful thing and you can imagine it's quite expensive we would put it up behind the band at every show i'm sure you've seen this with lots of bands the gypsies weren't going to give it to us because they said uh we want our money and we said well that's nothing to do with us that's you and the promoter and they said we don't care we're not giving you the backdrop until we get our money so after about an hour of heated negotiations between all parties involved they felt like they had gotten what they wanted they gave us our backdrop all was fine so we packed everything up and again, our bus was out front of the venue, so no room. And so the, the gypsies were all waiting with their truck before bringing their truck down to unload the lights and the sound until we were done. But because of all the chaos that had been going on earlier, it had delayed our departure. And we had a very long drive. I think it was to Poland the next day. So <clears throat> we were going as fast as we could. And at one point, I had gone back onto our bus, and in these double-decker buses on the upper level, there is a lounge in the front of the bus, seats maybe four people. And I was up there with the, the fellow who was selling our merchandise on this tour, his name is Bill, and he was settling up with me, giving me the money for the night, and we were counting it all and all that. And our sound guy, a uh, dear friend of mine named Don Dodge, who recently passed away, very sad about that, but Don was up there, so the three of us were hanging out. And at one point, I happened to look down in the street in front of the bus, because our bus driver, this Welsh fellow named Chop, who had a mullet from hell, he was just, but he was a funny man. He, uh, he was out there pulling the power plugs and getting ready for us to go. And the gypsies had decided they had waited long enough. And so they backed their truck up to start unloading. They started loading it up. And we went, whoa, 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 wait, hang on. We just need to get the hell out of here. We're ready to go now. And they said, no, you took too long. We're unloading. We're unloading out of the venue now. So, which meant that we were going to have to wait a couple of hours there. And now we were going to be late to the next show because it was a very long drive ahead of us. So we tried working things out. They started getting adversarial. I saw that Chop was down there and suddenly surrounded by about six of them. And I turned to... I turned to Bill and I turned to Dodger and I said, look, I think Chop's in trouble. We better go down there and see what's going on. And we walked downstairs and we started trying to settle the situation down. Uh, Chris Slade comes out to see what all the hubbub's about. And Chris had had a few drinks that night and was feeling in a impish mood, for lack of a better term. And uh, while people were all standing around discussing what was going to be done here... He decided it would be a fantastic idea to grab one of the speaker cabinets that are on these wheels and start pushing it as fast as he could down the street going, ah! Of course, the gypsies had no idea what the hell was going on. They started chasing him down the street trying to get their speaker cabinet back. What Chris didn't see, however, was at the end of the, the bus where we had our trailer attached, there was a couple of the gypsies who were just having a cigarette break back there. And they see this mad little bald welsh man run past them with one of their speakers screaming his head off and they were like what the heck somebody's stealing one of our cabinets so they chased him down they threw him to the ground they started beating the crap out of him <laughs> so the rest of us come running up there and the gypsies are chasing us and suddenly there's a street fight that breaks out in the middle of this little village outside of granada spain at about 2 30 in the morning Myself and the leader of the gypsies were trying to calm it down, trying to stop people from escalating this to where people can get it seriously hurt. I get Chris up off the ground. He's got blood streaming off of his head. Get him onto the bus into safety. We calm things down enough to, to step back and we said, okay, okay, I, I managed. There's a huge communication problem here because I don't really speak Spanish and she didn't speak any English, the leader of their, of their group. 
but we managed to somehow sign language and pigeon language our way through and and uh, agree that just let them finish their uh, their loadout and you know it, it is what it is and we just went on the bus to wait. Now Cody, the fellow I mentioned earlier, the guitar tech, he's a big man. He you know, he used to be a bouncer to bars. He can handle himself in a scrap. But he had been in his bunk asleep and had missed this whole melee. And he came out and said like, "What the heck went on there?" And I said, "Well, I explained the scenario I've just told you about." And he said, "Well, I'm going to go check." the uh the trailer to make sure they haven't messed with anything or broken in or anything like that so off he went and i go and find chris and tear him a new one you know you could have had the whole tour cancel if you'd done this to me this is ridiculous and cody comes back into the bus and he's just smiling just smiling and i went what's going on he says well i went and checked the trailer everything's okay and i found this and he held up a a portable or somebody's cell phone it was one of the one of the gypsies had lost it in the melee so he said we've got two hours to kill here let's start phoning the states so we spent the two hours phoning our homes on their dime because they had been such a-holes about blocking our way out eventually we got underway we did arrive late to the other show but the crew was fantastic we arrived 15 minutes before the doors opened and within 45 minutes, we only had to hold the doors an extra 30 minutes. Within 45 minutes, the crew had unloaded, set everything up, and we were ready to go. It was unbelievable. It just shows you how great these are, guys are. They're professionals. They really know what they're doing. And if uh, if situation calls for, they can step up and do an amazing job. Anyway, that's how we almost got <laughs> Chris Slade and I were involved in an almost a, a massive street fight in the middle of a small village in Granada, near Granada, Spain in about 2003. Remember that story, Chris. Best of luck with ACDC. I can't wait to see you on the big stage again. Thanks.